Let's work on sound effects for the first person controller. Before we begin, let's fix an issue in the jumping feature. Sometimes, even when a player is on the ground, the player will not jump even when we press the space key. We have to repeatedly press until the player finally jumps. To fix this issue, let's open up the player control script. The reason for this is because we are detecting the player input as well as updating the velocity in different update methods. So sometimes the player's input is detected in the update method, but the fixed update method is out of sync. That is why the velocity does not get updated. To fix this issue, we simply take this line, which applies the new velocity to the rigid body, remove it from the fixed update method to the end of the update method. Now the problem will be solved. Back to the editor, let's work on the sounds. I've imported two audio clips here, a walking sound and a wind sound. Since these audio clips will be looped in the background, I strongly recommend you to use WAV format other than MP3, because MP3 files will sound weird when they're looped in Unity. Let's go to the player object, and here we will create a new empty object. Let's name it audio. Inside, let's create an audio source object. And the first one, let's call it walk sound. Track the walk clip to the audio clip field and enable the loop property. Let's duplicate this and drag the wind sound. Also change the name of the object. And now let's go to the player control script. And below camera effects, I will define a new section called audio. Here, let's define a public audio source, audio walk, as well as audio wind. And below, I will define a float variable called the wind pitch multiplier. Let's go to the update method. And at the end of the method, we'll work on the audio. Before we do that, let's go to here. And we will make a boolean variable called is moving on ground. And for the value, we will simply take this line here, the condition inside this if statement, and we will move it here. So that means if the player is currently moving and the player is grounded. And for the if statement here, we simply use the is moving on ground. Now for the audio part, let's write audio walk dot enabled is simply equal to is moving on ground. So we only enable the walk audio when the player is moving and is on the ground. For the pitch of the walk audio, we will use the input.get key, key code shift. That means if the player is running, if the player is running, we will set the pitch to a higher value, for example, 1.75. Otherwise, 
it will be 1. For the wind audio, it will always be enabled. And for the pitch of the wind audio, mathf.clamp, which clamps a value between another two values. mathf.absolute, and we take the y velocity of the rigid body, and we multiply it by the wind pitch multiplier. And we'll clamp the value between 0 and 2. At the end of the line, we'll also add a random value using the range function, and we will get a random value between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1. So it adds a randomness to the pitch of the wind sound. Let's save the script and go back to the editor. Let's go to the player object and we will drag the references. And for the wind pitch multiplier, I will give it a value of 0.02. Let's play the game. And when I now walk, you can hear the walking sound. If I press left shift, the higher the pitch, the higher the speed of the sound. If we jump off the building, you will hear the wind sound. We can also play different walking sounds when a player is moving on different ground objects. To do that, we first go to the project settings. And in the attacks and layers tab, we can expand the tags list. I'll create a concrete tag and assign this tag to the building. This is the building object. Let's select all of them and assign the concrete tag. We can now go to the player controller and we will define a new audio source called Audio Walk Concrete. Let's go to the runtime section and define a string variable called active audio name and it has a default value of default. In the fixed update method, we're going to make use of the raycast call. If the raycast is successful, we will check if the transform hit by the raycast has a tag concrete then active audio name will be concrete. Otherwise, active audio name will be default. In the audio section inside update method, let's copy the code for audio walk and replace audio walk with audio walk concrete. We will modify the enabled condition as well. For audio walk, we also need to check whether active audio name is equal to default. And for audio walk concrete, we have to check if active audio name is equal to concrete. Let's also modify the pitch for audio walk concrete. Let's save the script and go back to the editor. Now the player is standing on a building, which has a concrete tag assigned. Let's hear the walking sound. Let's jump off the building. And now the player is standing on the grass. And 
walking sound is different. So that is how we work with the sound for our first person controller. In the next episode, we will work on picking up objects. I'm Yellow Flicker and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned!